Alrighty, thank you for joining us tonight. During today's agenda, we will be going through the introductions for your design team, the overview of the project, the area being affected, why we're doing the project, and any monetary impact this may have if you choose to connect to the two three to remain. Speaker. So your design project team includes myself, Brenda Oropesa. I can be reached at 817-392-8271 or brenda.oropesa at fourthwordtexas.gov. Our engineering design consultant is Donald Lang with BGE Incorporated. An overview of the project. So we will be extending the sanitary sewer main through Misty's Run from the intersection at Keller Hicks Road to the intersection at Old Denton Road. The Misty's Run extension will tie into the new sewer line that is currently being installed and extended from Keller Hicks Road and the Misty's Run intersection, westerly 900 feet. This project is in Council District 7. So this is an exhibit showing where we're going to be installing our manhole. So as you can see, this black line is where we're going to be installing the sanitary sewer main, running through Misty's Run from Keller Hicks Road to Old Denton Road. And we're going to be connecting to the sewer extension currently being constructed on Keller Hicks Road right here. And we're going to be tying into this manhole down here. So why are we doing this project? The Misty Run residents requested to be connected to the City of Fort Worth sanitary sewer system. Um, they are already being served by a six inch water main from the City of Fort Worth. And I believe we got 19 petitioners requesting for the sanitary sewer main to be installed. So what are y'all as a Misty's Run customers responsible for? So if you choose to connect to the sanitary sewer main, you will be responsible for paying the sewer impact fee, the sewer tap fee, hiring a licensed plumber, acquiring a plumbing permit, and abandoning your existing septic system. And we will go into further detail in the upcoming slides. So what is involved in abandoning a septic system? All tanks, boreholes, cesspools, seepage pits, holding tanks, and pump tanks shall have the wastewater removed by a liquid waste transporter registered with the Texan Commission of Environmental Quality, um, known as TCEQ. And it must be filled with fill material that is less than three inches in diameter and free of organic and construction debris. And once we get an inspector on board, um, we'll have an inspector when we do our construction meeting. Um, the residents will be required, shall provide a receipt of the wastewater that has been removed by a wastewater transporter um, and the show proof that the tank has been filled, whether that be with the photo or visual inspection going through the inspector. So why do I need a plumbing permit? Per plumbing code, a plumbing permit is required when plumbing is installed, changed, moved, or repaired. The permit must be obtained by a licensed plumber registered with the City of Fort Worth or a homeowner that goes through um, development services and meets the requirements such as the homeowner must be doing the work, they must live in the home, they must have a ID or a government-issued ID matching the home address. Um, they must be listed as the owner in TAD, which is the Tarrant County Appraisal District. They must have a or the warranty deed, and they must fill out the homestead affidavit. So if you want more information, um, if you choose to go through the permit process as the homeowner, you can contact Development Services for more information. So a licensed plumber or homeowner is required to install the private sewer service line from the residence to connect to the two-way clean-out at the property line that drains to the sewer main. And the application fee for the plumbing permit start at $25, but we will have um, more information of when you should be acquiring those permits during our construction meeting. Here in the picture, you can see um, a clean-out. So from here out this way is um, the city sewer main, so we will be installing the sewer main will be down here, and this will be your service line. And um, either the plumber or a homeowner who has gone through development services and acquired that permit will be connecting to the clean out and installing their private sewer service to their existing clean out. 
so what are sewer impact fees? An impact fee is charged to help offset new or increased demand that require additional capacity improvements on existing wastewater systems. Um, and this phrase here is actually an excerpt from our American Eagle um, Ordinance, Chapter 25. It says, if any existing development presently utilizes a water well, septic tank, or individual waste disposal system, and the property owner requests to connect to the city's wastewater system, the customer will pay for the fee prescribed by Chapter 35, verse 70.5, prior to connection to the system. What are the impact fees for this project? So the sewer impact fee is based on the size of your water meter and the year that your property was platted. Um, um, if you haven't replatted your property since 1982, which is when this addition was platted, and you have a five-eighths of an inch water meter, um, your impact fee will be $161 per domestic meter. If you have a meter larger than five-eighths of an inch or you have replatted your property since 1982, um, you can go to www.fourthwardtexas.gov. Um, forward slash impact fees, forward slash water, forward slash historical, or contact water applications at 817-392-8250. So what are the sewer tap fees? A sewer tap fee is a service fee that is charged for installing the service line from the public sewer main to the property line. For the Missy's Run sewer extension, the sewer tap fee will be determined after um, we receive bids from the contractor for construction. So we will have those fees closer to, um, we will have those fees ready whenever we do our second meeting closer to construction. And that will be um, in the fall of this year. How do I pay my sewer impact and tax fees? Um, you can contact water applications at 817-392-8250 or email Water development at fourthwardtexas.gov. They have an office located on the lower level of City Hall um, 200 Texas Street, and their hours are 8 to 5, Monday to Friday. So, where will the service line be located? So, here we have an exhibit. Um, they, I believe Donald Melby's out a few weeks ago, so you should have received them. If you haven't received them, please do let me know. Um, it shows the tentative location of your sewer service line for your lot. If you want to relocate that service line to um, reduce the footage to your septic tank clean out, um, you can contact me and we can get that arranged. You can, if it'll save y'all some money. Um, to change the proposed location, uh, you can contact me at 817-392-8271 or email me at brenda.orpesa at fourthwordtexas.gov. Do I have to connect to the sewer extension? So property owners who sign the petition must comply with the homeowner responsibilities and connect to the city sewer. If you did not sign the petition and do not want to connect, you may continue to use your existing septic system until you choose to connect to the fourth ward system. At this time, you will contact water development at 817-392-8250 to pay the necessary fees. Please be advised that after the extension project is completed, the TAP fee will differ from the fee derived from the contractor. It, the fee will be based on um, whatever the ordinance TAP fee is at the time you wish to connect. Timeline. So we are currently in the design phase of the project. We expect to start construction in the fall of 2021. We will be hosting a second community meeting to talk about the construction phase. Um, during that meeting, we will have more information regarding the traffic control plan. Uh, we will have more information regarding those um, TAP fees as well, and any other questions you may have regarding the construction. All right, here's my contact information again. It's Brenda Oropesa at 817-392-8271, brenda.oropesa at fourthwardtexas.gov. If you have um, any emergencies, such as water main breaks or sewer backups, you can contact 817-392-4477 and select option one 24 hours a day. Or if it's not an emergency, you can contact our call center at 
from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday to Friday at 817-392-4477. And um, they are closed holidays, that number. All right, thank you. Okay, we don't have any questions in the chat right now. Do the call-in users have a question? And please go one by one. I'm sorry, Mike Dotson, um, how do we pinpoint where the tap is now platted for our lot? What was the question again? How do we pinpoint where the tap is now platted for our lot? Where the tap is now plotted for the lot? Yes. So are you are we referring to where we're planning on putting the stub out? Or are we um, referring to like the plat? He's talking no, about the stub out. The plat. Yeah, this. Yes. Stub out. The stub out. So um, you should have received a an exhibit like this if you didn't um if you'll give me your your address and i'll i can either um remail that out to you or email it to you and that'll show where your proposed location is if you want to um change the location so you'll have to find the clean out and see your clean out your existing clean out and see what the shortest distance you think would be to the front of your property so if your clean out maybe here, maybe you want to put your clean out here, so it's just a straight shot. Or should, should we just email you with that? Should we just email you with that request for the? Because yeah, I, I don't yeah, think they sure. got the package that you're talking about. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. Just send me an email. Thank you. No problem. Okay, Brenda. The second question is: Assuming the sewer line will be installed in the middle of a street. How will the street be repaved? It will be entire street right away or just where the pipe was installed? So they want to know where the street's going to be repaved. Uh, I believe we're going to be repaving the entire street. We're going to do a pulverize and overlay. Okay, and Sana wants to know, would that have been emailed to us or by regular mail? She's talking about the exhibit. By regular mail. So we have a few people who haven't received those exhibits. I haven't received them. Okay, so Shauna, you haven't. Mark Presswood hasn't. Okay. Anybody else? I haven't. I haven't. Carolyn Nivens. This Carolyn Nivens. A... Nivens with an E in. Okay. Judy Sewer. I haven't received one neither. This is Ron Hitchner. I have not received one either. Okay. Okay. I think um, Donald mailed them out about a week and a half ago, but I'll um, double check with him. If they're not in the mail by the end of this week, I'll get those resent out on Monday. Tony Gibson, we need one as well for 2933. Okay. Need one for 1148. Misty's run also. Could you all email Brenda and give her your name and address so we have a list? Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We didn't sign a petition, did we? Huh? We didn't sign a petition, did we? No. Okay. Okay. We don't have any chat questions. Uh, call in users. Do you have questions you want to ask one by one? I sent a, this is Ron Hitchner. I sent a chat question. I sent it to Brenda. Oh, you sent it to Brenda. Okay, Brenda, do you see the chat oh, from him? Thanks. From Ron? Ron Hitchner. Yes, ma'am. I do not see you on that list. Okay, good. So I'm not ready to connect it. Okay. <clears throat> so what if you sign the petition and you want the tap, but you don't want to hook the sewer just now? Is that okay? Yes, so whenever you're ready to connect, um, you'll just contact Water Development. Okay. It's the approximate cost to hook up to the system. So we'll have that cost ready um, for our fall meeting. It depends on what our bids come back on once we go out to bid. And um, we'll go with the lowest bidder, but we won't receive those bids till we um, finish 
the design portion of the project and we um, go to to bid opening. But we will have those rates ready for the fall meeting. Okay. Shauna, did that answer your question? I think you were asking the same thing. Fall. When is this proposal supposed to go through? Like a year from now? No, this May. May? Mm -hmm. Come on, staff, get up. They're going to start digging up the street? They're just, they're putting it in the street rather than in. Uh, it's going to run right down the middle of the street. I don't know, bud. Ask them. Ask them. You're sitting right there. <laughs> it's going to be um, offset from from Is my not. I don't know. It's going to be offset from the water line, so it'll be about um, seven and a half feet, probably from. It won't be in the middle of the street. Hey, Brenda, this is Shauna. Yes. Um, so I think one of the big questions is, is that we're going to have another meeting in the fall, correct? Just to kind of go over this one more time and get construction. Yes. Okay. And then what, yeah. when do you estimate the actual construction might be? Not till 2022? Um, we'll start um, in the fall of this year. Probably oh, will be okay. Okay. And just, um, just one question. I know it's, it's, it's a money thing, obviously, you know, but I mean, I'm assuming from the paperwork that we got a long time ago when this first started, it was closer to like a thousand between a thousand and $2,000. Is that still about a rough, I know that's, you know, you can't tell me 100%, but is that still like a rough estimate? Just so people can start saving money, you know, if, if we don't have that just sitting around in the bank account. That would be a rough estimate. I'm not sure what it, it will come back as. Okay. Brenda, can you hear me? Yes. This is Scott Thronberry. Two questions. One is, um, Sean just asked you were going to anticipating starting construction in the fall. When do you anticipate the second meeting will be before that? So we'll have that meeting um, probably within three weeks. Now. Three, three weeks. About August, September. Okay, and I, I'm not a homeowner there. I'm, I'm, I run a business right off of Keller Hicks Road. And the last time you guys had done some construction out here, there was some major, I want to say cement um, square, you know, uh, sewer pipes that were going in, it looked like, but they really tore up the road. Um, and that was, that was a few years back, but I'm just curious, everything that's happened here last week with the water, main breaks and water lines, do you think that's going to, you know, improve, you know, or, or impact the timing with what you guys got going on? Because I'm sure there's so many other products that you guys are going through right now with what's happened and what's occurred that are going to probably impact the, uh, the timeline of this construction. Well, with our design phase right now, we're not really um, impacted by the sewer breaks since we're in the planning stage. But, um, I'm not sure who will, who our contractor will be, if that might delay them. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I, I'd be very surprised if it didn't. Just based on everything we're hearing, with uh, everything that's going on, we're talking about hundreds of, of, of breaks. So that's the, yeah, that's pretty significant and monumental. Seeing that this is a n never before seen event, you know, and I'm sure you yeah. guys are just going crazy, right? Yeah, there's a lot of breaks right now. Okay, well that's that's good to know. But but you'll you'll notify us through because because I got your I got the um, I want to say that the the flyer or the or the pamphlet in the mail that that came in talking about this meeting, and I guess you'll do the same to about the second meeting, right? Yes, yes. We will okay, notify great. everyone the same way. Okay, great. That sounds good. We just got a, a 
text from our deputy director, Laura Wilson, and she said the leak should be repaired by the end of the week. So they're working fast and hard trying to get that taken care of. Uh, well, Mark Crestwood, well, I just saw it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mark Crestwood, uh, Brenda, if you'll go back to slide 16, he wants us to clarify the question about who has to connect. Okay, so the property owners who signed the petition. Does that answer your question, Mark? That was the question I asked Order. earlier. Order. I yeah. signed the petition, but I don't. I want the tap put in, but I don't want to hook to the city sewer right now. Is it? Is that okay? And you said yes. Yes. Um, at that time, you will. The fee might go up if you connect at um, a different time. But the tap would already be there. The tap would be there, but the fee would be um, based on the ordinance. Okay. Price. Okay. Thank you. And Sally, Sally, this is Mark. I just wanted to, to clarify for her that question because obviously this says they must connect. And what you're saying now is they don't have to connect, but the tap could be there. Because when you when you say it like you did here was must comply with all the homeowner responsibilities that means connecting and getting rid of the uh, septic and et cetera et cetera. So right, right. Hi, this is Christina. I'm in water applications, the supervisor in water applications, and and I believe in um, soon. Um, I know you're on. If you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the petition requires the homeowners to connect to the system. Um, there's a cost, uh, you know, um, the city is going to be extending that sewer line. So the petitioners um, are um, the sum of all the petitioners going in will help to cover some of those costs um, to be um, to have that sewer line run for the for a credit to allow you not to have to pay for a sewer extension. You would only be paying for a sewer tap. Is that that's why we have that first bullet um, to show that those property owners must, uh, the petitioners must connect. So can I get my name off that petition? This is Tony Shalala, Water Department. The main reason, like Christina was saying, doing, can anybody hear me? Yes. yes. The main reason we're doing the project is all the people that signed were entitled to a 200 foot credit, which, which made it to a point where the city will solely bear the cost for the installation of the sewer main. If nobody had signed a petition and presented it to the city, we would not be doing this project. So we would like for everybody to uh, connect and sign the petition. Obviously, we cannot force you, but the main reason the project was initiated was because we got enough people to sign the 200 foot uh, credit got applied to it to whereby city can say, okay, we'll go ahead and build this project. So that's why some of these extensions get done depending on the power of who signed the petition. But if you don't sign, uh, Brenda said, we can't force you to connect, but we'd like for you to connect. So that's, that's the best way to explain that. And who has that list? Uh, we, we have it of people that signed the petition. So how do how do we know if we're on that list or not? We can make that available. That would be awesome. Yeah. What's your name? I have the list in front of me right now. My name is Ron Hitchner, H I T C H N E R. I do not see you on the list. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Also, in addition to that, once we finish, obviously, we cannot leave the roadway the way it is. So we're going to be, like Brenda said, we're going to be reconstructing that roadway. It's going to be better than what it was before, and that's another added expense. So typically, when we do this, we, we hope we'd like for people to do that's, that's it in a nutshell. 
<laughs> Brenda, I just this is Sean again. I just have one more quick question about how long would a project like this take from start to finish? We have it set at about two hundred days. Ooh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody else have questions? So we, we, this is Scott Thornbury. I guess with the residents that have already signed, you, I think you're saying 19 have signed the petition. Uh, out of how many residents on Misty's Run are there? Is that, is that a majority of, of what of, of who's of who signed? It's um, 19 out of 32. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a majority. Mm -hmm. And you said, and just so I I, I heard this, this right, you said that's going to take about two hundred days. Yeah, that's what we have um, on the schedule for the construction phase. And as you go along with the second meeting, I think you're, you'll clarify more specifically where they're going to start on which end, and 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 this is because, like I said, I got a business right there that I that I run off of Keller Hicks Road, and the last time they did some work, it was terrible. <laughs> Um, so I, you know, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to be blunt, but I mean to be blunt. It was really bad. Um, so I'm just curious do, do you'll, you'll clarify at that 2nd meeting or and there may be even a 3rd meeting. I would imagine if there's got to be more clarification, right? Well, hey, Scott, this is Mark. Scott, this is Mark. Those are 2 different projects. Okay. On Misty's the run. Keller, okay, hold on a second, please. The Keller Hicks project is separate from Misty's run. To okay, so the Misty, so, so the Misty's run is just dealing with the Misty, this Misty's run, the street itself. Am I correct? That is correct. Yes. Okay, well, that, that's a big relief. I'm sorry for Misty's run, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> and to answer your question, the sewer is installed from the downstream end up. So we're going to start from the downstream and work the way up on Misty Run. Okay, I see what you're saying for downstream up. Okay, got it. So it'll start on the Keller Hicks side to run up to Miss to Old Denton. Yes, but Scott, be clear and let these guys clear for you that I think there is a, another project for Keller Hicks that will probably begin sooner. Yeah, I was curious on that because I saw them come out and, and put stakes out uh, within the last two weeks. So. But I'm surprised I didn't get any information on that. I just got information on this and I thought this was re re relative to it. So how would I find out about that information? So are you speaking about this project? Uh, yeah, I guess that would, yeah, that would be it. Correct. Yeah. So, um, I believe John Kasovich is in charge of that project and I think they are starting construction this month. Okay, so uh, is there a con uh, is, is there a contact number for John? Yeah. Let me see if I can. Can you pull it up, Sally? Could you please email your name and uh, email address to uh, Sally, and we'll have John contact you tomorrow. Okay. It took a while to get that job going because we had to go get easement plus a whole bunch of stuff. So that's why that project is started late, but we had to spend a lot of time to get easements and make things clear before we could put that sewer main in. But email your information to Sally and John will respond to you tomorrow. Okay. And I'll and I'll get uh Sally's email. I'll put that in the chat for you. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, this is Eileen Oliver, and I'm sorry I forgot about the meeting, so I'll try not to ask anything too repetitious except for one question. When do you plan to start on the Misty Run sewer project? So for the construction phase, we expect to start um, late fall. Late fall. So, okay. yeah. And that's what takes 200 days? Yes. Okay. All right. Again, I'm sorry I got in on the tail end, so. Oh, no, you're good. If you have any more questions, um, <clears throat> my phone number is 817-392-8271. And I believe sure. Sally will also be posting this PowerPoint presentation online. Okay. It, I'm sorry, your, num your number again was 817 
Yes. And your first name was what? Brenda. Brenda. Okay. And okay. just there on the location of the sewer tap, you have to start construction to locate that sewer tap. So prior to us beginning installing the sewer main, if you want it moved, you can come out there and show us the exact location. We want to make sure you drain properly from your house to our sewer. So you can always adjust that connection point up until the point you actually construct the line. So you do have that leeway, just to be clear. Yeah. Hey, Brenda, this is Ron Hitchner. Hi, Ron. Hey, Brenda. Brenda, uh, you know that list you were talking about, and thank you for clarifying me, but, but there's other homes on this street have probably sold since then and have new owners. And they probably didn't sign that petition. So how does that work for them? If that home, that original homeowner had signed that petition is now since sold and moved. I would assume you can't force a new petitioner. Gotcha. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm just curious that there, there's been a few houses sold on the street the last year or two. So. That is correct. Brenda. Brenda is correct. We can't force the homeowner. Since they didn't sign it. Okay. But they could get on the list if they want to, right? Um, there's no need to get on the list anymore since I believe um, in order to do the project, we had to have 200 linear foot credit per person on the list. So there's probably enough credit to cover the sewer main. Got it. Okay. Actually, question. Credit or not, we are moving forward with the project. We can't put it back down. Ready or not, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brenda, there is a scenario. <clears throat> Hello. A question. Yes. Are we? I'm a new homeowner in this neighborhood, and um, are we expecting to have any uh, sidewalks um, when they repave the the road, or it's just going to go back the same way as it is? We will be repaving the road, but um, we will not be putting in sidewalks because I believe um they said it would cause drainage problems. Got it. Thank you. Um, I got a question. When they um when they dig up the road, um, what are we doing about mailboxes? Because on when they did Ridgeview uh, Circle or Ridgeview Court, um. They had to go to town to get their mail for, I think, six months or eight months. Mm. Or is it up to us to get a bucket and sand and stick our mailbox in it or? Would you repeat that question? Not quite sure what you were asking. Yeah. Um, a few years back when they did the, they put sewer in on the other side of the ranch that sold, it's Ridgeview uh, Court, I think is it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Ridgeview Court. Okay. Um, for months, uh, the people weren't getting their mail at their house. They had to go to town for it. So whose responsibility is it to, do we, do we as homeowners need to take our mailbox and Stick it in a if you remember the if you remember the bucket. That, sorry, if you remember that project, we put in a large 48 inch water main, which impacted Ridgeview Court a lot. In this one, we should not touch your mailboxes. Oh, you won't touch the mailboxes. If we should have act if we do take it down or something, we, we may have to put up temporary, but we we'll put it when we get done. But you should have access to your mail. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Okay. 
if you uh, have access to the chat, you'll look at the first uh, chat message. If you will copy the link to that project page, that's where I'm going to post the um, video, YouTube video of this meeting. We're also going to do a summary FAQs. Um, we'll put the map, I think the map is already on that page, if you go to that page. I think that's all that we would add to that. So you can share that with all, Shauna, we're going to send it to you as well. Uh, if you can disperse it to all the Misty's Run folks. Yes, ma'am, I sure will. Do we have any other questions? Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate this. Okay. Thank you. Does that mean everyone's questions Thank have been you. answered? Okay, we'll contact you uh, when we do a, it'll probably still be a WebEx virtual meeting. I don't think we'll be doing uh, meetings in person yet, even by fall. So check your uh, mail for the uh, mailer. We'll also contact Shauna and make sure you guys get all the information. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Have a good one.